It's that time. An author. Offensive production number one. Number two. I forgot. <laughs> Golfer. It'd be like going on a three-person best shot, and we were saying, pull back. you got to make a 25-footer every time. Uh, you wouldn't putt first. I'd have Tim putt first. And one heck of a TV personality. This game is for the Cooper Cup. <laughs> it's the Forum's Jeff Kolpak. Four. I should have yelled two. All right, here he is. Jeff Kolpak leads us off each and every Monday. we got a lot to get to with Jeff here. Uh, as a former post-2 parent, I know you uh, have to feel the emotions today after uh, what went down. Crazy up and down weekend. The, the wild win. Uh, late Friday, early Saturday morning. Then they come back nine hours later. Which was again. impressive. Yep. I mean, that might have been more impressive than what they did uh, Friday night. And then to sit in the stands and not have anything that you can, you can control over your outcome is tough. Yeah, we were fortunate in 19 not to have to go through that tiebreaker that I remember. I don't think it was a tiebreaker. I think we were in the final four. Uh, but yeah, tough play to end. I just, uh, it's it's the format. Yeah. You know, it's the format. And when I saw the Texas pitcher throw his first fastball at 80 miles an hour, I go, this is not setting up well. I mean, <laughs> this guy is, is, is BP at best. And, it, and they actually, I, I think Texas got lucky because yeah. Troy should have absolutely yeah, pulverized right. that guy. And they did. There are a lot of hard outs, but they should have. They should have. They got 12 right, on that I guy. was going to say 10. Yeah. And if 10 were having a different talk, we're having a different conversation today because that would have been enough for Fargo to advance. But I, no, so I'm sure they're all flying back today. And I feel like it's probably a similar feeling because when we lost a winnable game in the yeah. national title game, you're just, you feel good about getting that far yet. Yeah. It, you're just, you're, you're just that short of, of taking it. And, and there's that sort of emptiness too. And plus the season's over. Correct. And, and for a lot of these parents, the, you know, the career of following yeah. these kids is over and you got to deal with that too. Yeah. And you also had to deal, they had to deal with weather like you guys did. Cause you had, Same. A, you, had a, yeah. you had a couple games oh. with weather that was delayed and we forever. Feel like, we feel like it went against us because yeah. we were on the Idaho Falls starter. Right, that, th their the draft championship pick. game, yes. Their draft pick. Yeah. We were on him, and we felt we would have knocked him out the yeah. way we were playing. And then the, the monsoon came. And it then when, when that happened, I go, oh, here we go again. Yeah. Here we go yeah. again. It just never fails. That game, though, Friday night into Saturday morning, that, I mean, to score, tie the game in the 10th, tie the game in the 13th, that was impressive. Pretty gutsy. Yeah. Yeah, pretty gutsy. And it says a lot about w when you're on a run like this, they're just – I mean, of course, there's no quit in you, but when Beiswinger hit that double with right? two outs to tie the game, with two I, strikes, I, I believe this too. could be the year. Yeah. This could be the year for this team. That was awfully impressive here. I've a, I love this. We have emails waiting for you like an hour before oh, the show. Gosh. This is uh, and this is a good one though. A golf question for you. Question for Jeff. The next two weekends, the top fifty and then top thirty move on. Talking about the FedEx Cup, is it the FedEx rankings or what place you finish in the current weekend that determines? Who moves up? Rankings. Yes. Yes. Rankings. So Tom is what twenty eighth. He dropped seven spots. Yep. That tells you how volatile it is because he finished forty sixth in the FedEx St. Jude Championship, but dropped seven spots. So now he's got to have a big weekend if he wants the Tour Championship. And, and you got it in at the top thirty if right. you get in the Tour Championship, which is the third and final playoff tournament. Oh, and it's monster money. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's amazing. He made it two years ago, and that was. He but made three million just by finishing tenth. I, I think he's solidified himself for next year. He's good there. Yep. He's but the Masters is still up for grabs here. So if he finishes top thirty, he gets into the Masters for twenty twenty five, and he wants that after not making it. I imagine badly this year. Yeah, it's it's getting down to it. How exciting it is for uh, having a Fargo guy, you know, it's playing that well in the top twenty eight in the. PGA Tour. I don't know if you want to leverage this with the uh, higher ups because you know you are you're a very important person. But right. uh, the second week of uh, the the, Fe the FedEx Cup is at Ca is in Castle Rock, Colorado. How far is that from Boulder? Can oh, we make that happen? Uh, the BMWs out there. I think it's week. a fair amount, isn't it? I, I, I've never played <laughs> Castle Rock, but I, I think it's way south. I, but that's where they're at this weekend. So if you want, you say, hey, you know. I got to go cover Tom, and he covers. Then I can stay out there, and bam, I'm there for the game. Well, you know, <laughs> we're all about giving, right? We're all about giving. You're all about and, bringing the viewers and listeners. And, and if we had an unlimited readers, budget, it'd right? be a no-brainer. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you out there, man. So, Oh, that's nothing, man. It's an hour. You can yeah. do that. Yeah. Get bumping out of the hole on the horn here. We'll get a make that happen.
Uh, so that's uh, I appreciate the email on that. Well, you got to get credentials too. There's, you know who you are. <laughs> yeah. so it's a golf show. How do the Masters credentials work out for us? Well, huh? It's a little different here. I mean, they'll they would they looked at us and went. <laughs> that was a, yeah. That was a hard no. That was, that was a, a hard one, no. Uh, that mm-hmm. one there. Uh, so this morning, the Athletic uh, Chris Vanini has ranked all of the uh, FBS teams. Colorado, he's got coming in at fifty-one. Remember, they were four and eight last year, as we discussed. That he seems missed. a little high I to me. I think so too. That seems a little high. Prime had his uh, outdoor practice. It was open to fans. He welcomed video, of course. Then he had the most bland practice uh, of all time with Travis Hunter not practicing. Uh, as well during the game. We're 10 days out. Are you ready to start talking about the football game what, now? What do you think if SMU had, what, 58 new players <laughs> and coming off a 4-8 and eight season, do you think they would be ranked 51st? Not even no. close. No. No. No, this is all name attachment uh-huh. and who plays. But but uh, these media people, they, they're falling prey to that, which I think is a little – not right. I mean, have some <laughs> objectivity. I will Don't say, Don't fall prey to the, all the hype going on here. Two of the reports out of the practice Friday cons- all, both said consistently the offensive line was not good. That there and that's carrying well, over from 2023. Yeah, whatever that for that's worth. I mean, but again, they're starting two freshmen up there. One's yep. a true freshman at left tackle. That's a but again, that's a concern. And your job in the media is to try to somewhat be objective yeah. here. And obviously, we've lost that over the oh, last seven, gone. eight decades. Yeah. Yeah. And there's only a few, a few of us stalwart, staunch, you know, tried to be middle of the road as much as you can possible left. But wow, I, I just, uh, it's just, uh, it's just what's, it's, it's a poor th- reflection of some people in the journalism field. That, and, and you listen to the prime press conference last week. They're, like, asking about his knees. Oh, you know, just come on. Oh, geez. Well, if he's not answering questions about. Yeah, he might that, as well ask him about his knees. You know, knees, generic huh? or, you know, even the most basic questions. I don't know what you're supposed to you're supposed to ask the man. On the Bison side of things here, they had their final two days of, of fall camp today and tomorrow before their school begins, and then it's on to the, the, the game week grind. I think we have our idea of the seven guys, eight guys who are going to constitute the Bison offensive line. Uh, any surprises? There's a couple redshirt freshmen there. Griffin Empey and Jack Lewinsky are going to be in the mix, according to what Tim Polisek told well, us. Well, I'm not. I'm not surprised at Lewinsky. Griffin Empey, I think, came on at the end of last year. If it's my gut feeling, nope. and came on in spring. So, should we be surprised? No, not really surprised. But they need somebody, and then we'll see how he plays. I mean, well, the lights are ha- haven't haven't been on yet. No, nope. for the young man. I would. Sorry, Trent Fraley and Hayden Johnston are the other two in the mix at center. Fraley's young, but he's man, he's he's the son of an NFL player. He's been around the game. I think Fraley's going to have that job. I think that's yeah. going to be his when uh, when we see them go out in Boulder. And same with Lewinsky, you know, son yep. of an NFL player. Right. You know, that makes a difference growing up in that offensive line mentality. And then you have Zabel Miller, and then Jake Rock is pretty much a rock at that one spot as well moving inside from tackle to guard. That's a huge guard, by the way. Jake is all of six foot eight uh, to play that uh, position. But that's that's the group. That's how Polisic ended his interview with us on, uh, what was it, Tuesday last week, mm-hmm. last time when we were up there, that that's going to be the group for the offense. And that's going to be the group if the Bison are to pull off the upset, mm-hmm. which I think it will be an upset, although yes. not, not a huge surprising upset if they play well. But they have to run the ball. It's no secret. We've been saying that for two years since they've scheduled this game. And if they're if they're able to, like they did against the second half in Iowa, like they did in the second half against K State, uh, all those I'd say FBS like a ma- victories. Majority of the game they did against Arizona up until the end of the game, they decided not to run it. I right. think they they were doing pretty darn well running the ball against the Wildcats in that game. Yep, and, and so uh, obviously it's gonna you're not gonna be able to outshoot Shadir Sanders probably, but. Nope. Uh, the best way to keep the ball out of Travis Hunter's hands is not give him the ball. Chris Kleiman told us in Vegas, Bison run the ball well. They'll have a heck of a chance to win that game is what uh, is what he said. Now, speaking of that, Barika Penu is back running. Uh, I was doing that on Friday. Mm-hmm. That tends to be in a good direction there, that potentially he could be on the field. The big one, and we talked about it on the Bison Media Zone on Wednesday, is Cole Wisniewski's status. And I think as we sit here on August 19th, 10 days out, if he's not out, we're off to practice today. It's open to the media. If he's not out there, I don't foresee him playing 
in the Colorado I don't, game. I don't think – I don't know how you can. Yeah. And my concern now is for the season. That's correct. That's my next question. Then yep. you go on to beyond this game, then it's the season. Well, and Tim told us last Tuesday that right. they'll know in the next 10 to 14 days. Yep. We are now six days out of that. Yep. And I just don't think you can – if it was South Dakota State in the playoffs, that's a different deal. But this is a season opener non-conference – I mean, yeah, you want to win the game and you want your best players out there, but you got to be smart about it too. Well, this is a a bigger decision than just North Dakota State football. This is about his professional future as well, which he believes, and I think most of us do believe there's a professional future there. So if you're not healthy to go through anything, and we did this with Noah Gindor, if you'll remember, and there was eerily similar, similar circumstances here with Noah, that if you can't do all of the post-season stuff in terms of the comp, all that, then do you consider taking the red shirt, because he can, and do this all over again in 2025? You have, you have to. I don't know how you cannot, and especially he's new to the safety position. And there's one thing we learned about Trey Lance is he never had really enough repetitions yeah. heading into his NFL career. Yep. I think that's obvious. So we've heard that over the years. Yep. And the same, Cole's only been at safety one year. I think you have to come back for another year and, as the coaches would say, get more pictures. The question then becomes, does he come back here for his other year? Because he's already tempted enough to co- to do that to return in 2024. Well, you know what I mean? Like, like that's out there too. That he's not a he, he may not choose would, to come back here. Would an FBS here. take a guy who yes. hasn't played in a year that size with that already on tape, and they know he's healthy in a heartbeat? Okay, in well, a heartbeat. He, he already declined that once. Yep. yep. Just throwing it out there yep. that the possibility, but that that now has to become. Center state, and if it's not him that's playing there, then it's going to be on Ryan Jones and, and Darius Givens. This, and this is a huge year for Darius Givens yep. to be that difference maker that I think the coaches always had hopes for him. Yeah, Matt Entz could not rave about him more over the last two years about how much of an athlete he is and how good a player he's going to be down the road. And I think we started to see that during spring football. He's flashed on special teams. Now maybe, boy, you're going to get thrown into the grinder. If it's Travis Hunter, you got to stop, and two other Colorado standouts because they have skilled guys that are going to make you go, wow. Uh, that's a heck of a well. Way to start. But like we said in our Bison Media Zone bit last Wednesday, or was it Thursday? Wednesday, yep. Last uh, last week, that uh, the best. What makes a good safety? You can talk about six two, two hundred. Yep. What yep. makes a good safety? A good defensive yep. line. Which they believe they have, yeah. but they're also dealing with an injury up there as well. We'll break. We come back. We'll chat a couple other topics here with uh, with Colpac as we start off the work week in style. Back uh, on Hot Mike on this Monday morning. Right after this. Back with Jeff Colpac. Sam Herder going to join us in his season debut in about 10 minutes. I'm looking here. The first games of the season are up this weekend. I was just rolling through it. Do any of them interest you there? We got Florida State, Georgia Mon- Tech. Montana State, yeah. New Mexico. How about, so the ESPN line right now is Montana State minus 10. Yeah, this isn't New Mexico State. This is New Mexico, which usually is much better yeah. than New Mexico State. And I don't know what's going on with the Lobos. I haven't looked one iota into it. <laughs> but that's... Minus that, 10 FCS On the team. road. What, is it a night game, too? It's not. It's a 3 o'clock Central Time. That's a 2 o'clock Mountain it's kickoff in Albuquerque on uh, on Saturday. Well, Vegas. Might be, might be warm, by the way. Vegas knows, knows stuff. I mean, they, that's, they, they do their research. I do not do my research on New Mexico. <laughs> Vig's team is good. They're, they're going to be right there again with Montana. Lost, lost a couple guys, offensive linemen of the portal. They did. That'll hurt. But they, they got, got Tom, back. Tommy Malotte's yeah. back. He's got to stay healthy. Yep. He's got to stay on the field. Malotte stays in that game in Bozeman. Montana State wins that game against the Bison. I firmly believe that. He's a guy that just can't stay healthy, though. Well, but he's so aggressive, and he, and he just puts his body out it there does. and runs for extra yards. Maybe it'll be like the Carson Wentz thing. Can you run out of bounds once in a while? <laughs> The uh, other game, that the Ireland game, Florida State, Georgia Tech, that's where college game day will be on Saturday morning, 11 a.m. over in Ireland. I would venture a guess over the next three or four years while the calendar's moving. Uh, this is just educated guess as well. This is going to become the new week one. Week zero will go away. 
and this will become when Week we start one, the season. Uh, abroad somewhere? No, I mean for everybody. Okay. Like this early in August, this yep. is when we're going to start playing football games because they're not going to want to have the championship as late as it is. It's January 20th this year. I think they're going to want to they're going to push everything up. You know, but that only affects three, four teams, you know, the late season. So I, I think uh, that's not a anymore. Little... Now it's 12, remember? They're well, in the playoffs yeah, but, now. But, but only four will advance into mid-January. And, and so to me, that's a little overreaction when it comes they to wanna, this season. They want to stay away from the NFL, buddy boy. That's their that's their thing. Well, you know, so, you're a TV guy. Well, that's what I'm telling you. They're going to want to I'm just to a pseudo away. TV guy. They're just gonna I'm stay a pretend away. guy. They're going to want to stay away from the NFL. That's I'm just telling you that I would imagine in the next few years we're going to have the start of the season be circled around here, which will be uh, early for some. Maybe the rest of us are, can't wait for it uh, to begin. I am interested. We're going back to the Bison here. We're talking, you mentioned defensive line. That's the one area, especially against a young Colorado offensive line. Bison, have, you know, when you do your, I don't want to give away your uh, secrets here for your prediction, but when you do the check marks, I would be the big check mark, Bison D line in that one. Well, this whole check mark thing is going to be a mystery because. <laughs> We don't know what yeah. Colorado has. I don't know if they really know what they have <laughs> with so many new guys. It's going to be a total, not not that it's ever that educated, yeah. but it's going to be really a guess. I mean, how do you give a Colorado offensive line any credence until you see them yeah. play? Well, How do you, a, a new, I mean, wide receiver will, will be Colorado. Yes. Quarterback will be Colorado. Yes. Although Cam's pretty darn good. He's Shador, pretty good. Shador yeah. Sanders It might be is, one of the few times yeah. Cam doesn't get it. Yeah. Yep. But when you're talking in a pretty high round draft pick here, after secondary probably Colorado. Hunter plays both ways. They got to give the nod. I would imagine, especially because the Bison are youthful. You think spot. he's going to go both ways? Yes, all, you do. Yes, against against an FCS team. Yes, it's prime time. It's the I'm not talking about Dion. It's prime time. It's the first game. There's more. Yes, he's going. Yes, okay. He's going. He's going both ways. I would. If not, that'd be an advantage for the Bison. If I he's mean, not running back, we really don't know what Colorado has. They're new there. I don't know. Do we know what the Bison have there? Either, yeah, they're though. new there yeah. too. You know, it's kind of a push uh, there. Defensive line would be the one I give any issue. Special teams depends on who's back for Colorado returning kicks. I think you got to give offensive line to NDSU. I don't know how you can't with yeah. Zabel yes. being an NFL guy. Yeah. And Mason Miller is a five-year guy. Yeah. Jake Rock's been around. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, that you got to make that decision when you do your safety uh, with Alwesneski. Yeah, coin flip there. Yeah. I, I give it to Colorado. Yeah, on that one. On new new guys. The intrigue of this, though, and this is the way I want to end the segment with with people you talk to. I think the energy is there, and I think if they're somehow if the Bison are able to win this game, that's the jolt that. The community is looking for, and that leads into my story I did yesterday on yeah, the, I was, the I was game gonna, day changes. I was going to get to that too, and because, I think yeah, go ahead. No, because we had Cam Bastion on the show on Friday, and I we have hammered this for three years on attendance and what to do. And I had eighteen people ask me about Wi-Fi, and that's that's a dome thing. That's not an NDSU thing, but they still need it. I think this is a step in the right direction. I I I do. I think some of the things are gimmicky, but the the pregame walk I think is pretty cool. I think if, if there are fans that want to pay to go and run out with a team, go for it. You know what I mean? They have the safeguards there to go and do that. You, you can't just say, we're just going to keep running out of the helmet because we've done it, Jeff, for 20 years. I feel like it's kind of cheap. I feel like they could charge more. <laughs> are you serious? Run out of the locker room? You, you give somebody. I'm sure. There, people yeah. will pay $500 I'm, for I'm that. I'm sure more. they will probably do that. The best part of, the, I think, the story that you did was the overall theme of the story, and that is that. We're not doing things yeah. being NDSU. We're not doing things because this is the way it's always been done. And and that thankfully that philosophy is starting to go out the window and you're doing some other things. Yes, you got to keep Thunderstruck. But that's the only thing in my mind because it's such a staple and such a, a tradition and history thing Correct. that you have to keep yep. everything. And I've said this on your show several times. Everything else is on the table. And Tim Paulsick comes in and goes, you know what? Let's do this walk from the locker room at the indoor facility yeah. to the dome. Let's do that because in Frisco, that seemed like a really cool oh, thing to do. Massively popular. And other stuff that they're doing, uh, the, the three, the ticket package, yep. uh, was it three games for? They've wanted to do that for a while. So you you could pick, it's for 100 bucks, and you can pick. Any three one, games for 100, right. Well, it's, it's there's, oh, there's a combination a, yes, there. Not, so not you can UND, pick one right. game out of Towson, UND, and South Dakota State. Yep. 
and then two games out of the other three with Missouri State, Northern Iowa, and Tennessee State. That's a good idea. For That's a great that, idea. For people that don't want to commit to all six or can't commit to all six but want to do some of it, why not? If you're a hunter, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, hop on that right now. I think that will be immensely popular. I so that really takes away in. that you hear it's about too expensive. Yep. Well, this doesn't seem yeah. too expensive no. to me. Nope. And I, I think the other changes, and you've been on this, and I'm with you with the seats. They can do that. Soblix told me that that's and told you both that right. we're, they're, where they're at with that. Wi-Fi is extremely expensive. but Vote it's, yes for the Fargo yeah, Dome, please. It boils down to that. I, <laughs> did, I did say that on the show. I don't live in Fargo, so I could say it. Save and you save Fargo's greatest asset. That's, yes. It's as simple Absolutely as that. that. But I, I would applaud them at least doing this. Because how many, often we say, well, here we go, same old, same old. It's not going to be the case for that home opener on September the I'm 7th. I'm sorry, but chairs make a difference. When we walked into that Spokane Arena with those cool yeah. black, matte black yeah. chairs, didn't that just yeah. give a real cool oh. vibe? And then when you walk into the Fargo Dome with that light blue and just I, red. I would even go to, I went to Huntington Bank Stadium last year, the season opener for the Gophers in Nebraska, and all those those seats are gopher colors. That's cool. Yeah. It is. It's just a, yeah, that's that's something small. But it Even a, a, a Hunter way. Green, I think, which would yeah. fit in. It's just not because it's NDSU, but it fits in with the color scheme of the dome. The, <laughs> and it is, by the way, your number one it's tenant. Your primary tenant. You want to take care of them as, as best you can. So uh, we'll see. That story is still available in forum.com. And I'd, uh, if you did not see it, check it out. If you missed our interview with Cam, it's also available on WDAY Plus and in forum.com to go back and check it out. Great stuff as always, man. We'll Good see to see you. Good later. Week. All right. Good week, Here he comes. Jeff Kolpak joining us each and every Monday. If you missed it, you can see Jeff and I on our Bison Preview Show. It's also available on WDAY Plus right now. In front of the big wall, too. That was pretty cool, right? That was cool. I love that wall. We'll come back. Hour 2 on deck. Sam Herter joins us as we get into the 2024 FCS season. We're back after this.